So let's take a look at everything we know about the future of Warhammer 40k. What is Games Workshop coming out with in the short term, mid term and long term? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought we'd do a bit of a summary of rumours, previews, leaks and educated guesses as to what's going to be coming for Warhammer 40k over the coming months. It's always fun to try and shine a bit of a crystal ball into the future, and we actually do have rather a lot of details as to what's going to be coming next, including the things that Games Workshop hasn't even formally announced. Here's just a rough schedule as to what's going to be coming from Games Workshop, a bit of an overview, then we'll go through each one of them one by one, and what we know about them. In the short term, the next 40k codex is Imperial and Chaos Knights, perhaps led by that Chaos Knights launch box first, the Rift War Warzone book for Warzone Nachmund and Codex Chaos Space Marines, which we're already seeing rules teasers for. Potentially at a similar sort of time to those, we've also got the Horus Heresy rebooted. That one certainly could also be not all that far away. And there might well be a reasonable chance of them releasing another chapter approved book in the not so distant future. I did say with that Warhammer Seasons idea that it might be updated every six months. Though I think that will be a bit excessive for most people if they actually think that you're expected to buy the next chapter approved every six months. Then we've got the next two Warhammer 40k codexes, Chaos Demons and Imperial Guard. We know that they're going to be coming at some stage, as they'll be the only ones that haven't had a 9th edition book yet. If I'd had to guess out of the two, I probably would have guessed Chaos Demons to come before the Guard, as it does sound like Guard are having quite a big release with them. Then, besides the 8th edition update books, there's the newly announced Leagues of Votan, the rebranded and more futuristic looking squats, a really quite strong probability of a World Eaters codex, and a new updated Space Marine Codex along with its supplements. Then after that, if 9th edition follows the previous two editions example, there's quite possibly a bigger campaign series with new rules for a bunch of factions, no doubt culminating in 10th edition, and whatever crazy changes that brings. Overall, I think it's a fair amount of reasonably exciting stuff, a fair few interesting miniatures that are hinted, so let's go over everything one by one. First up, we have Codex Imperial and Chaos Knights. They're officially the next two codexes to drop, and it seems that the main new miniatures that they'll be getting alongside them are the Knight Abominant and these new multifold war dog things for the Chaos Knights, the ones that build the close combat carnivore and the brigand and the stalker. That's the mixed roll one and the ranged version. The war dogs have the option of an Avenger chain cannon and something called a slaughter claw close combat weapon, and they seem to come with an optional havoc launcher on top. The Knight Abominant is armed with a massive Volkite weapon. Some lashing tentacles and some birds that you can put on the top. He can cast two psychic powers from the new Warp Storm discipline that we talked about on a preview a few days back. So far for the Imperial Knights, we haven't heard of any new models yet, though it's not impossible that they might surprise us, I guess. Though I think if something was coming, they probably would have mentioned it at the same time as the Chaos ones. My guess is that the first release that we'll see from the Knight set will be this Chaos Knights launch box. That one contains the Abominant two of the multi-build war dogs, and the new codex and data cards. It seems likely that this would release before the main codex, much in the same way that the Black Templars one and the Orcs launch box did, and they came before them. Then after that, I'd guess that both the Chaos and Imperial Knight codexes will probably drop at the same time. We've seen a fair few previews for them already, and I'm sure we'll see a few more. Plenty of weapons are getting buffed, as you might expect, particularly the Reaper Chainsword gets a sweep attack, the Chaos Knights can dedicate individual knights to individual gods, and the Imperial Knights get a sort of chaplain litany mechanic for their Knight Preceptor, and a few nice options with the Code Chivalric. If you can win Honor, then you get two decent buffs from two different options, things like extra command points or bonuses in combat. In any case, as with all Knight Edition Codexes, I'm sure it'll bring a massive power boost to the faction, perhaps not too unwelcome as Knights have kind of been struggling throughout most of Knight Edition. Another release that we know is coming quite soon is Warzone Nackman's Rift War, this is the latest in Games Workshop's narrative campaign books that have a few small rules supplements for main 40k thrown in, certainly not universally popular because of the price. The lore in this one revolves around the Black Legion versus the Wardens of the Gauntlet Space Marines, though it seems that the Black Legion are supported by the Thousand Sons and Chaos Knights, and there's also Drakari Raiders present in the system as well. So far Games Workshop haven't previewed all the things that are coming rules-wise for the main 40k game, the only one that they've really shown off is the Thousand Sons Warp Meld Pact. It's a new army of renown revolving around Zangors. It gives off a fair few really quite important options, including things like vehicles and 5 plus invul saves across most of your Thousand Sons infantry. 
but it means things like Zangles and Spawn get a 5 plus save against Mortal Wounds, a pre-game move, and a few really quite powerful options including redeploying things and a Kabbalistic ritual for regenerating Zangles. I must admit I will be quite surprised if it actually turns out to be any sort of power boost for the Thousand Suns, it looks a bit underwhelming right now, but I guess we'll have to wait and see the full rules. Aside from that, there's at least one other Codex supplement in here. There's really quite a lot of options that they could choose for this. It could be something Chaos Knights, Drukari, or Black Legion. And seeing as they're a bit inconsistent with these and just how much content they bring, there could certainly be other stuff besides. I'm sure there'll be a fair amount of Crusade and narrative stuff as well, if you are wanting to follow along with that campaign. Next up, it would seem like the next Codex after Chaos Knights would be Codex Chaos Marines. It seems the most likely, seeing as we're actually already seeing rules and model teasers from the book, and we haven't heard any of that sort of thing from either Demons or Guard yet. The Chaos model rumours have been going around for quite a long time, via that big leak that so far seems to have been right about everything. It correctly called that there was going to be a regenerated Chosen and Warpsmith from the Eldritch Omens box. The other things on the list were both Bikes and Possessed being redone, both really quite reasonable choices, and the Possessed might well be the same size as Greater Possessed, at least judging by some of the rules leaks. Otherwise, it looks like the Chaos Marines might be receiving quite a few mortal reinforcements, potentially some Renegade Guard and Human Mutants, a Cultist Command Squad and a Standard Bearer, and I think there's at least a very reasonable chance that we might be seeing a redone here on Blackheart as well. There was a very Chaos-looking Flamer Claw previewed, and he does have a new Black Library book out, so I think that there's at least a decent chance of that. Games Workshop also showed off all these mini previews of bits of miniatures as well. I have a feeling that some of these are from the Possessed Chaos Marines, and some of them are from the Human Mutants. Really quite a lot of freaky Chaos stuff going on there. We've got tentacles and things bursting out of people's backs, some demonic eyes and wings and things, and that might well be the rumoured cultist banner there, the one that's breathing out some flames. Rules-wise, it appears that quite a lot of the book has already leaked. I've covered some of the more interesting rumours in quite a lot of videos already. From Games Workshop themselves, they've told us that Chaos Marines are going to be getting two wounds, and the standard ones are getting three attacks as well, kind of interestingly putting them slightly ahead of Primaris Marines. Not too bad for the followers of the Dark Gods to get a leg up. The standard Chaos Marines are rebranded as Legionaries, and they're also going to be getting a few upgrades like that heavy chain axe, and a mini sorcerer that you can take within the squad. There's been lots of individual units talked about a bit, but perhaps some of the most interesting rules leak changes were that Chaos Doctrines are now going to allow you exploding sixes to hit in different phases, in a similar sort of mirror to the Loyalist ones, but you don't get extra AP. It seems that all of the Legion traits are getting massively redone, and very helpful too, seeing as they were quite underwhelming currently. And a fair few units are rumoured to be missing from the Codex, things like Fallen, Corn Berserkers, and the Cult Marines. Apparently for the various Cult Marines you'd be using their own Codexes, though the Noise Marines do remain in the book, as apparently their Codex isn't coming out any time soon. I'm sure Chaos players will be looking forward to the book. It's been a pretty ridiculously long time in coming, seeing as they knew they were going to be getting basic changes the same as the Loyalists. Next up, also potentially in the very near future, we have Horus Heresy. Games Workshop had a Horus Heresy event advertised in Warhammer World on the 7th of May, and it seems likely that the main release won't be too far behind this. Leaked ages ago, we had that big rumoured launch box, some people appear to have been calling it Heta Gladius, and it looks like they are going to be including that massive new Spartan in the box, alongside around 40 Marines, two Praetors, a bunch of Terminators, and a Contempt to Dreadnought. Really quite a meaty kit, particularly if they include the rulebook, I strongly suspect it's going to be very pricey, far more than Indomitus was. So far, Games Workshop have shown off the Praetors, the new Spartan, and the new Mark VI Marines, though it also seems very likely that a plastic version of the Leviathan Dreadnought, Sikaran Battle Tank, and the Diamos Rhino are all coming, as they were three really quite popular resin kits on the Forge World web store, and they just all mysteriously got removed. Rules-wise, I'll fully admit my knowledge of Horus Heresy is pretty limited, but they're not making enormous changes from 7th edition, just polishing the rule set, and it seems that they've got an interest in new reactions mechanic, something to allow your army a bit more play in the enemy's turn. A lot of the playtester rules do appear to have leaked online already, so there is a fair bit of info if you do want to look into it. A whole load of new plastic space marines certainly isn't the worst for 40k collectors. All of the Forge World units can be fielded in regular 40k, so it's going to be quite nice to be able to get those in plastic as well. I'm sure we'll see at least a fair few Spartans gracing the battlefield, if for no other reason than rule of cool. So they're perhaps the most immediate releases that we have coming. 
but then not too long after that, it seems almost inevitable that we'll have Chaos Demons and Imperial Guard, as once we have Knights and Chaos Space Marines out of the way, there will be the only two 8th edition codexes left that don't have a 9th edition update. The Demons have perhaps been the ones that have been least hinted at yet. Rules-wise, they're certainly in need of a hand. Bellicor and a bunch of Keepers of Secrets can do some work, but much of the codex does remain very underwhelming indeed. The big 40k rumour did say that Demons were a major project being worked on, so it's not impossible we could see a fairly decent release for them. I feel like Games Workshop does quite like doing Demon releases, as of course their models can be sold for both game systems, Warhammer 40k and Age of Sigma. There's a fair few options for models that they could update, a few fine cast relics that could certainly use a plastic kit. I do kind of wonder whether they might release some Chaos Furies similar to those Warcry Chaotic Beasts. It feels likely that they'd have a minor character release at the very least, and quite possibly more. I think there are also a few other models that have Age of Sigma releases, but not 40k rules. For example, the Sinessa and Dexessa Slanesh Greater Demons. They seem like perfectly logical choices to get 40k rules for in a new book. To be honest, just collecting all the Chaos Demon rules in one book would be kind of handy. They are kind of spread out across multiple publications now. Next up though, we have the Imperial Guard. Again, an army that's been longing for an update ever since the start of 9th and sound like they are going to be getting a pretty major release wave when their book eventually comes. Among the rumoured kits is a new sculpt for Castell and Kreese, presumably managing to escape from Trazin the Infinite's collection, a new Kazakin team that's kind of basically confirmed by this rumour engine picture of a stripy camouflage next to an Auspex, a new sculpt for the Sentinels, new heavy weapon teams, a new heavy tank called the Rogue or Dawn, supposedly a little bit heavier than the Lehman Ross, and either Rough Riders or Death Riders, Again, basically confirmed by Games Workshop's rumour engine here, with quite a characteristic grenade lance tip there. Really quite a lot of good stuff. The Imperial Guard does feel like an army that's got an absolutely vast range, but a lot of it is incredibly old. Rules-wise, it doesn't appear that there's that many rumours out there at the moment. The only place that was claiming to have any concrete details was a YouTube channel called Simply Warhammer, saying that the new Rogue or Dawn tanks would be Toughness 9, Lehman Rosses will get a plus 1 ballistic skill for their turrets, but tank commanders will go to ballistic skill 4+, plus, and Lehman Ross turrets could fire out of combat, which would be really quite a nice insurance against getting locked up. Recently confirmed to be coming, we have the Leagues of Votan, Games Workshop's new regeneration of the Long Dead Squats, the Space Dwarfs from Warhammer 40k's distant past, discontinued with very few hints that they were ever going to be coming back. Games Workshop has so far shown off one infantry model, a couple of shadowy silhouettes of his squad mates, a new faction symbol, and a little bit of nice artwork. At this point, I feel like their release could still be a very long way off though. When they redid the Sister of Battle, they did show off the first new miniature really quite a long time before the main codex released, so I suspect that their launch could be months and months out yet. Lore-wise, they've given us a few teasers so far. They're called the Leagues of Votan because they worship ancient decaying AIs called Votan, and are directed into battle by these supercomputers hopefully giving them an edge over their foes. It'll be interesting to see what else Games Workshop teases about their lore. I'm sure we'll see bits and details of them dropping over the next few weeks and months. Model-wise, they've only revealed this one guy, which appears to be armed with a heat rifle or an ion weapon, potentially. Some people have marked some of the similarities between that and Tau Tech. Otherwise, there's a couple of shadowy silhouettes, one of which appears to be armed with a power pickaxe, and given the squat's limited range when they released back several decades ago, I'd be kind of surprised if they didn't release at least some sort of bike for the faction, and some sort of more heavily armoured squat in exo armour, who appear to be standing on guard in this little picture here. They have confirmed it will be an entire range release, not just one single unit. It looks like they're coming back in force, and not just as a little allied squad as a curio. Another army that's looking likely in the mid to long term are the World Eaters. Their release hasn't been officially confirmed by Games Workshop yet, but it seems really quite likely. Two completely separate leagues have hinted at their return. The Chaos Codex leaks say they're not in the Codex, which would imply that they have to be elsewhere. And the big leak that's been right about most things also said that they were a project being worked on. If the Chaos Space Marine Codex isn't all that far away, then if they are absent from the Codex, then it does sound like that would basically be confirmation that Angron is coming back. I think we'd have a fair idea as to what sort of models that they've released if and when World Eaters did drop. They'd certainly have to redo the Corn Berserkers, Potentially that's one that's quite long overdue, they're quite dated at the moment. I'd have to be Angron there to match up to Magnus and Mortarion. Likely a unique brand of Terminators to fit in alocide these Scarab Occult or the Death Guard ones. 
perhaps red butchers maybe, and otherwise if they are going to follow in with the same sort of pattern as Thousand Sons and Death Guard, we'd likely get some sort of a unique cultist or followers, and then some character models to lead the force, maybe some support characters to help out, and I guess they'd release at least one demon engine to go along with them, maybe something similar to a blood slaughterer from Forge World. I'm sure World Eaters would be very popular though. It'd be really cool to see them realised in a similar sort of detail to the way that Thousand Sons and Death Guard are. Sometime later in the year, it also sounds like Space Marines are going to be getting a 2nd edition codex within 9th edition. Games Workshop does have a bit of a habit of updating Space Marines far more frequently than other factions. They did have two Space Marine books within the last edition. I feel like they might see it as a bit of an easy win, seeing as Space Marines are the most collected army. Hopefully at least they'll hold off on it until the rest of the 8th edition codexes actually have their 9th edition one. If Space Marines get two codexes before Imperial Guard or Demons get theirs, I think it will trigger a few eye rolls. As well as a new Space Marine codex, it sounds like they'll be refreshing the supplements as well. Things like Ultramarines, White Scars and the other core codex ones. The ones that maybe feel a little bit more minor compared with the more divergent ones that used to have their entire own standalone books. I feel like the majority of these do hold up really quite well. A few have rules that are showing their age though maybe. For example, Rebuse Gilliman really isn't holding up quite as well to some of the contemporaries coming out in 9th. I feel like he's going to get significantly more powerful if they do redo Ultramarines. And besides that, I feel like Imperial Fist and Raven Guard players could use a bit of a boost. Their codexes have perhaps been some of the more underwhelming ones throughout 9th. Models wise, it sounds like the Primaris Marines are getting at least another small release. There's rumoured to be a Redemptor Dreadnought version armed with a Melter weapon and new Primaris Marines armed with either barrage weapons or missiles, and it certainly doesn't seem impossible that they might release more besides. I feel like potential gaps could be actually releasing genuine Primaris Terminators, not just Gravis Armour Marines, and also Primaris Jump Assault Infantry as well. It does seem a bit weird with all the Primaris units they've released, that they haven't done one that's just the basic equivalent of Assault Marines yet. Rules-wise, I feel like Space Marines aren't in the most terrible place at the moment, particularly not following the Armour of Contempt rules. I think maybe one thing that the Codex could do a lot better are the vehicle rules. The vast majority of the Space Marine motor pool just really isn't worth taking at the moment. Redemptor Dreadnought's just doing the same job but better, compared with really quite a lot of choices. Overall though, a new Space Marine Codex and a whole bunch of supplements being reissued, that's be very major news for Space Marine players of really quite a lot of armies. Of course, with the previous three, Votan, Space Marines and World Eaters, we've got no idea exactly what order they might come out in. But perhaps after at least the majority of them have dropped, Games Workshop might likely be moving towards the edition's endgame, maybe in a similar sort of way to how they've wrapped up the previous couple. Firstly, scattered in with all the other releases, we'll likely see a few more Kill Team boxes. I'm sure they'll add in a few more interesting stuff for 40k. Out of things that have been rumoured so far, a Harlequin's Kill Team has been mentioned, and I feel like it's at least somewhat likely that the Kazakin kit might also be a Kill Team release. It could be really quite a nice way to explore other things within the 40k setting though. Maybe things like Renegade Guard, Fallen Dark Angels or Croup Mercenaries. It could all be potentially interesting choices for an update. I'm sure we'll get at least one other chapter approved as well. It depends whether or not they decide to backtrack on that Warhammer Seasons thing that they had going. They said that there'd be chapter approved books every 6 months, which would seem a little bit frequent to me. And I'm sure we'll see a fair few more of those Warzone books out and about. Some of them have had big impacts on the game, some of them very little. There might be a few more curveballs thrown in. Finally, at least over the last two editions, they usually wind down with a campaign series. The Psychic Awakening books happened at the end of 8th, the Gathering Storm series happened at the end of 7th. Potentially a few more interesting updates to the 40k narrative and how things are progressing. I think Psychic Awakening wasn't too terrible as a campaign went, as it actually did provide a little bit new content for every single faction even if Games Workshop supplement books never tend to be particularly good feeling, not with the amount of rules that you get for the money and their expected shelf life. Then I've got no doubt we'll eventually get to 10th edition. It was interesting in the list of updated supplement rules that you could use, but a fair few expired in June 2023. If something major is happening then, it could well be the release date of a new edition potentially. I've got no doubt that they'll shake up a bunch of rules, try and take feedback from what people liked and didn't like about 9th, Maybe the biggest question is whether or not they'd pull a bit of a hard reset on the game like they did at the start of 8th edition, basically just rescind everything before it and issue new index books for the codexes, or whether they'll keep all the books that they released and then just try and alter the core rules to make things new, interesting and feel a bit different. 
from that gamer survey that they issued a little while back. I feel like it's quite likely that they'll cut down on stratagems in some major way. Hopefully we'll be discussing that in a video towards the end of the week. Anyway though, it looks like we've got really quite a lot to come before the end of the ninth. At least six more codexes, plus probably a whole bunch of supplements, and really quite a lot of fun exciting models. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed a bit of a rundown of what's likely to come in 40k. Let me know what you think of the leaks and predictions down in the comments below, and if you have any other insights as to what you think is going to be coming and when. I'm sure there'll be some leaks, teasers, and ideas that I missed in this, so I'll definitely be interested to have a read over your comments. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or I'll certainly keep the regular 40k stuff coming, with new videos out just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the stuff on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description below. Making so many videos each day does take a fair amount of time and effort, so if you are enjoying regularly, any support is enormously appreciated over there, it is what allows me to keep on making these videos quite so often. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.